feel that and it resonates. Uh, I have a couple of questions that come from um, something in uh, uh, the chapter of uh, the eternal now. And so what I would like to do is um, read you one thing and then see if you can elaborate. It's just a sentence. See if you can elaborate on what you wrote and what you meant by this it. This is something I For, wrote. That you wrote, yes. So, yeah, <laughs> yes. I, I wouldn't have dreamed. <laughs> it says right here, Rupert Spira. I remember, I remember when Francis, uh, he was doing a, sorry to interrupt you, Lynn, he, when Francis was, uh, he was doing a retreat at my home in Shropshire and I had the manuscript of, of um, the Transparency of Things, which I was, which was the first book that I wrote, you know, and I was showing it to him, and he he was going through it, and we were, we were going through it, and he was making various su su suggestions at things that could be changed or things that could be added or something like that. And at one point, he said, he said, um, I'm I'm not trying to um, I'm not trying to to interfere with what you've written or change. He said, I'm just wanting to make sure that you don't put anything to into print that you later regret. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm a little nervous about yeah. that. To write. <laughs> Hopefully this will not be regrettable. Hopefully. <laughs> um, so the first question comes from, um, you were talking about the eternal now and the infinite here. And you say, there's no span of time that separates our birth from our death other than the thought that thinks it. I don't quite get that. Other than the thought that thinks it. Can you elaborate well, a little bit? The thought that thinks it, I mean, other than our belief that there is a span of time. Okay, um, because you also said <laughs> 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 the, the birth and death of our body takes place at the same time and place, the eternal now and the infinite here. And then that other sentence came after it. Yes. So uh, it just, when you say the thought that thinks it, I mean um, the belief about it. The belief about it. Yes, the, the, the thought of it. Okay. The, in other words, we, we, th we believe that time exists. We believe that our, to use this, this topic, we believe that our bodies were born at one particular moment in time and that our bodies die at another particular moment in time and that we believe that there is something called time that separates these two moments. And what I'm suggesting there is that, the, that time only exists or seems to exist as that belief, that it doesn't actually exist in reality, which means in experience. That I can get, but what the, the birth and death taking place at the same time, and I understand if we go to the eternal now, then it fits in, but it's some, something about that. Um, it's just not clear. Okay. Well, let, let's not take birth and death. Let's take something closer to home. Let's start with this experience. Would you agree that this experience is taking place now? Yes. And let's take breakfast this morning. When you were experiencing breakfast this morning, would you agree that it was taking place now? Yes. Okay. Now, how many now? So those are two nows. We've, how many nows have there been in the intervening time? Just one. Just now, 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 now. Just, so just I, now is there a difference, for instance, between this now and this now? No. no. Did, did the now, did the first now move slowly for five seconds along a line of time? And the, no. No. The, is your experience of now moving? Is, no. is your current experience of now, is it moving through time? No. It's right right now. Or is the idea of time appearing now? Well, the idea of time, I mean, time is an idea, so yes. so, it's so, not so in a, what I'm trying to, to show is that we don't actually experience a line of time called now. We, we do experience what we call now. And we've actually only ever experienced one now in our life, w which you acknowledge. It, it's always this now, and this, we have no experience that this now is moving through time. We have an idea that the present moment uh, is, is, is a moment that is moving along a line of time, but that's not actually our experience. Our experience is that this now is not a moment 
in a line of time. It is that this now is more like a we could call it a, a space. It, it is, and it's not going anywhere. It is the space in which experience appears, but that space is not going anywhere. It, it's the, the the space of now in which every experience appears, the birth of your body and its disappearance. It's it's the mind spreads out eternity and makes it appear as time. So then would you say that, I mean, are we basically all dead already? (laughs) 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 I mean, you know, if it happens at the same, because, you know, back, let's say, the birth and death of our body takes place at the same time. So in a certain way, I mean, it almost suggests, and maybe it doesn't, but it's, it almost suggests that um, that there's a compression of yes, but but then you see you, you're trying to understand eternity with your mind, yeah. and your mind is constructed to experience in four dimensions: one dimension of time and three dimensions of space. Therefore, whatever your mind looks at or tries to understand it will look at it through the prism of its four-dimensional structure. Mm -hmm. And therefore it will impose that structure, those limitations, on whatever it experiences. So you are now looking at eternity through the prism of your four-dimensional mind and trying to see eternity as it is. You can never see eternity as it is with your mind because your mind imposes its own four-dimensional structure on whatever it experiences. So, does that mean that... um, I, I suppose the thing that is sort of unclear is um, because there's one, uh, you may not have said what I'm about to say, but it, it, there's one way of seeing this, which is everything, you know, has happened, really. If there's no time, then um, in a certain way, uh, from, the, from the, I don't know, perspective is the right word, but from pure awareness's um, point of view, uh, then everything has already taken place because there is no time. But you see, from pure awareness's point of view, there are no things to take to place. To take place, okay. It's only from okay. the mind's right. point of view that there are things that take place. Okay. So you mm-hmm. cannot, you cannot, we cannot superimpose the limitations of our own mind, in this case, the belief in time and objects, and think that they pertain to consciousness. We cannot say from consciousness's point of view everything. It's only from the mind's point of view th- that everything. Yeah. Dot, okay. dot, dot. Okay, let's move on to number two. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, um, but I, I just want to just want to just yeah. say something about that, because saying that, because I, I said that you're trying to understand eternity with your mind, and the mind can never understand the eternal because it imposes its own limitations. But I just wanted to say something about that. But nevertheless, there is a place where eternity and time intersect. In other words, there is a meeting, a a place where consciousness and mind intersect, and it's called now. So now, from the point of view of the mind, seems to be a moment in time. But from the point of view of awareness, it is eternity. So that is why the now is a portal for the mind through which it has access to its own eternity. But then another part of that uh, is that the intuition, there's an intuitive sense that there's something there in that, in that statement that you wrote about. So. It's not that I. It's not that it's rejected outright, because intuitively yes. I'm asking the question because I, I that. feel that there's I something understand. in yes. there. Yes. And so, so, so how does intuition yes. fit into this kind of exploration? Well, I- intuition is knowledge of reality, 
this is one way we could define intuition, that intuition is knowledge of reality filtering in to the finite mind. Let me give you an, an mm -hmm. example. That uh, how many people here, uh, this really only, only applies to those of us that are over 50, which is most of us. Um, <laughs> how many here have had the, the feeling that as I get older, I really don't feel that I get any older? Well, I should say, how many people have, over 50 have not felt that? That, that is an intuition. So normally when we say, you know, when, um, when someone... Uh, 75 years old, it's, it's your grandmother's birthday and she says, I really don't feel that I'm getting any, I feel I'm getting younger every day or something. That kind of comment tends to be dismissed as, oh, oh that's very sweet, Granny. You know, that, that, <laughs> <laughs> actually, you're aging. But, but <laughs> sweet <laughs> Granny. <laughs> yeah, so it tends to be just dismissed. But actually, Granny is spot on. Because she's, in, she's talking about her internal experience and her grandchildren are looking at her from the outside and limiting her to her body. So they see she gets frailer and frailer, therefore she's aging. But Granny on the inside, as she gets older, as she seems to get older, her, the structure of her life, the, the clarity of her mind, her memory, her body, begins to, to fall away from her. And as that does so, her essential being begins to shine mm -hmm. more brightly in her experience. Mm -hmm. So as there is this falling away of the external elements of her experience, her, her internal being, and she becomes, uh, it doesn't always happen as people age, but in this case it does. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> she becomes more and more, less and less identified with all the parts of her that are her memory, her, her, everything that is falling away, and more and more identified with her essential being. And because of that, she feels, I'm not aging. In fact, compared to the age that I used to feel that I was, I feel I'm getting younger. So when she says to her grandchildren, I feel I get younger every day, that is an intuition of reality. Her grandchildren dismiss it as some, uh, just as, as right. sweet granny, granny rambling. But, but, but it's, that is an intuition. It is knowledge of her, of her real being filtering into her mind and being expressed in the, in the language of her everyday mind. But it expresses an intuition, which means it expresses something that is... Uh, uh, her, she's in touch with reality, the reality of her essential being. My wife will love that. <laughs>